How to Sew a Round of Robins Quilt by Amber Makes. Celebrate Britain's favourite bird with this stunning quilt. It's easy to make and if you follow me, I'll show you how. How to make a robin block. We're going to start by learning how to snowball a corner, which is used in a lot of the blocks. So take the two pieces of fabric that are listed in the instructions and on the wrong side of the piece of fabric that you want to be in the corner, draw the diagonal line in the position that's listed in the instructions. It could be top left, bottom right, as I'm doing here, or it could be the other way around. Now place this right sides facing with the piece of fabric that you're going to cut the corner off and pin together. Sometimes these pieces of fabric are the same size like this, and sometimes they're different sizes, but the instructions are in the details. Sew along the drawn line. Now, place your fabric, before you cut anything, place it on your pressing mat and fold the corner over so that it meets the opposite corner and press. This means is if you haven't sewn exactly correctly, you can pull it across and you'll get a neater, more accurate corner this way. Once you've pressed it into place, fold it back and trim the seam allowances to about a quarter of an inch. Make sure you're just cutting through two layers of fabric. Once you've removed all of that bulk, you can press it back open again and that completes one snowballed corner. The position of these is all in the instructions as you make each section of the robin block. And then it will look like this. Now there's one section of the robin where you have to snowball two corners. So to do this, it's, it says in the instructions, you place the little square in the top left hand corner and you place the, the big square on the other corner. Draw a diagonal line across them as detailed in the instructions. But basically the diagonal line is drawn so that it cuts off the corner. This method of snowballing corners is much easier to do than cutting triangles sewing them together because you're only dealing with straight edges, not stretchy bias edges. Although it uses more fabric, it's a much easier method and it's also more accurate as well. So once you've drawn the diagonal lines and placed the fabric back into place, put a pin through and then sew along the diagonal lines just like you did with the other corner. Then it will look like this. Again, don't forget to fold the corner over so it meets the raw edges and the opposite corner and give it a press and do it with the other one. When you're snowballing two corners of the same piece, you can do them at the same time. Unless they overlap, there's one section that overlaps that you'll see in the instructions and then you have to do them separately. But again, this is all detailed. So always trim off. Make sure that you fold the corner back first before you trim it off because you don't want to trim through three layers of fabric. And then because you folded it over, it's become unpressed a little bit. So just give it a final press. And that's how you snowball a piece of fabric when you're doing two corners. You use this method when you're making the robin blocks. Making the right facing robin blocks. Let's start off by making the rows. So to make row one, take section A, you snowballed section B, and then make section C where you've snowballed two book corners of it. Now sew these together in a row by sewing A to B and B to C. Remember all the details of where you have to snowball the corners and which fabric you use are in the instructions. I'm just showing you here visually how it's all joined together. When you sew two pieces together where there are angles like this, roll one seam back on top of the other just to make sure they match and pin together to make them match and then pin together at the other end. You'll just get a neater finish if these diagonal points match. And then sew A to B and B to C and that finishes row one. To put that to one side and you can now make row two. To make section D, snowball the corner of the light brown fabric with the background fabric square and then section E is a red square. So sew these right sides facing with D on the left and E on the right. This completes row two. To make row three, make section F with the background fabric and the dark brown fabric. With section G, snowball the corner with the dark brown fabric first, then do the red fabric, because the red fabric overlaps the dark brown fabric. So do that in two stages. 
and then section H is a red and a background fabric. Sew these together in a row. And press the seams, that's row three. To make row four, section I is dark brown fabric and background fabric, and section J is just one piece of background fabric. Again, sew these right sides facing. Make sure you pin them together and always match up the raw edges before you sew. And then that completes row four. Next, you need to make the top and bottom borders of the block. So take one top and bottom border piece, that's background fabric. And then you need to take the green, two green squares, which are the Robin block top and bottom border squares. On the wrong side of each of them, draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other. Now place one of the green squares on the left hand side matching up all the raw edges so that the diagonal line goes from top right to bottom left because as with all the snowballed corners the piece of fabric that you're snowballing the corner with always has to cut off the corner. But just make sure that the line is sloping like this. Again, this is detailed in the instructions. So you can see these diagonal lines are sloping from the inside to the outside. These borders are snowballed in this way because this creates the pattern when you join the star blocks in place. So along those diagonal lines, trim, press the seam, the fabric over, trim the seams in the same way as you did with snowballing. That's the top border. Make the bottom border in the same way, but cutting off the corners at the bottom edges, just like this. And that's the top and border, bottom border complete. Assembling the block. Take rows one, two, three and four that you made earlier and place them one above the other in the correct order. Now place row one and row two right sides facing so the bottom edge of row one is meeting up with the top edge of row two. Pin them together at either end and then pin together between. With some of the rows there are seams that need to match up so when you get to those rows make sure where the seams need to match up you pin together to match those up you don't need to do that with this one. Sew it together, turn it and then right sides out and then sew row three in place and row four in place, remembering to match up the seams where you need to. This is what it looks like when they're all joined together and I've pressed these seams to one side. You can press them open if you prefer. So that's the main robin finished. Now you need to attach the side borders. So sew them either side of the robin block. So take one side border, place it right sides face. Now turn it over because it's best when you're sewing two pieces to fab of fabric together to sew the piece that has the majority of the seams on. This just means that you can make sure when you're sewing it in place that the seam allowances that you've pressed open or to one side stay in that position. Because sometimes if those seams are underneath, they can get twisted and it just makes it a little bit more bulky. So sew it together along that side and then sew the other side border in place. And you can see I've pressed the seams over to one side. Now take the top border and the bottom border that you made earlier. So the top border to the top. Again, turn it over because you've got the majority of the seams here. There's no seam matching to do, to do with these border pieces. So just pin them either end and then pin them between. Because the robin block has got more seams, you'll need to give it a little pull because the, when you've got seams, it pulls the fabric in a little bit. And then just make sure it matches. And then sew, pin and sew the bottom border on in the same way. And that's the top and bottom border completed. So the robin block is now completed. You just now need to add a beak. Now this is optional, you don't have to do it. I cut a three quarter by three quarter inch square fabric and then cut it in half diagonally to make a little triangle. Now you can put the beak so it's facing that way or you can turn it round so it's facing that way. I used gold fabric for my beaks but you could use another fabric. Black fabric works just as well. These are just small scraps of fabric that you just use and then when you've 
decided what colour and the position, sew them into place. I used the blanket stitch setting on my machine. You could use a zigzag stitch or you could use a just a normal straight stitch. Now make all of the robin blocks in the same way. You need to make seven of these right facing robin blocks and you can see here that I've used slightly different fabrics just to change it up a bit for the beaks. But other than that, those seven robin blocks are all the same. Making the left facing robin blocks. These are made in the same way as the right facing but everything is reversed. So you join them together in the opposite way. So you make section C, section B and section A and then join them in this order C, B, A. When you snowball the corners of these in the instructions it details exactly where to do this but they are done in the opposite direction to the right facing robin blocks. Now we're going to make row two. So put section E to the left of section D. Do make sure that you follow these left facing instructions because they are the opposite way round to the right facing instructions. Once you've made row two, make row three. So you need to snowball section H, section G, you snowball in two stages and then section F. Sew those together in a row and that completes row three. To make row four, you've got section J, which is sewn to the left of section I. So that's the four rows finished. So take those four rows and place them in order, with one at the top, then two, then three, then four, and then sew these all together, just like you did with the right facing robin block. And it will look like this. And you can see it's now facing in the opposite direction to the right one. Take the two side borders and sew them either side of the block, remembering to sew with the robin section on top because it has the majority of the seams. Make sure you pin at either end and then pin between. These are easy to sew on because the side borders are just one piece of fabric, so there's no seam matching. Once they're sewn into place and you've pressed the seams, then you can sew the top border and the bottom border into place. Once you've sewn those into place, attach the beak in the same way as you did with the right robins, alternating the fabrics if you want to or just using the same. And then repeat this to make five left facing robin blocks in total. And that's all the robin blocks now completed. Making the star blocks. You need to make 13 of them and they're made in the same way. Let's start by making the diamond square step section. So take the red square that's used for the diamond square and four of the background fabric squares. Draw a diagonal line across the wrong side of each of the diamond corner squares. Now place one in the top left corner of the red diamond square. And you can see here the diagonal line is running from bottom left to top right. Take another square and put it in the bottom right corner. And you can see the diagonal line is running from top, from bottom left to top right. Do refer to the instructions when you're making these because all of the positioning of the squares and where the, what direction the line should face are all there. So it's easier if you follow that. Sew along those lines and in the same way with snowballing a corner, fold the square over to meet the corner and press and then repeat that with the other one. Pull it gently just to make sure that the raw edges and the corners meet up. Open it up and then trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch through the two fabric layers and that cuts off those two corners. and then just press them back into place again, just to make sure that those seams lay nice and flat. Now take the other two diamond corner squares 
and place one in the top right corner and you can see the diagonal line is cutting off the corner because it's running from the top left to the bottom right. Pin it into place and then place the other diamond corner square in the bottom left corner. So basically what you're doing is turning the red diamond square into a diamond by cutting off the corners with the background fabric. Sew together down these two lines and it will look like this. And again, fold the corner over. Do take the time to do this. You will get a neater finish by just taking the few seconds to press the corner over so it's nice and flat. Then you can trim the seam allowances. And always make sure that you fold the top fabric over so that you don't cut that off as well. You only want to cut through those two fabric layers. So just always double check that you're cutting the right things. And then give that a press. And that's now turned the square into a diamond. So to finish off this, you need to just add some borders. So you need to add a star block in a border side strip to either side of the diamond. Just match up the raw edges and sew together. They're cut so they're exactly the same size. So this is easy enough to do. Make sure that you've got the diamond on top so that you can sew exactly across the seam allowances so that the points are on the edge. Fold the seams, I've pressed them over to one side and now take the star block inner border top and bottom strip, place one of those at the top and one at the bottom. Again, they've all been cut so that they fit exactly. So when you're doing all your cutting out, make sure you follow the measurements exactly as I've listed in the instructions and then everything will fit nicely. Also, I've labelled everything when I've cut it out. So when I get to each stage, I know what everything is called. In the instructions, it's labelled with the names of what you put together, exactly the same as the names in the cutting out instructions then it's much easier to assemble because then you don't have to re-measure everything if you just write a label and pin it to each of the pieces as you cut them out. Now sew the top strip into place and sew the bottom strip into place. And this completes one of the star block diamond sections. Making the HSTs. You need eight HSTs for each star block and we're going to make these all in one go. So take the green square and the background floor square, which are the star block HST square. And on the wrong side of the background fabric, draw diagonal line, two diagonal lines, one from each corner to the other, just like this. So they cross in the center. Now place these two pieces of fabric right sides facing and pin together. If you pin together outside of the lines, then you can keep these pins in place as you're sewing. Now to sew these together, you need to sew a quarter of an inch either side of the drawn lines. So you'll be sewing four seams in total. Make sure you do this accurately. So you can see I've got four seams, they all cross in the center and I've sewn quarter of an inch either side of the diagonal lines. You can draw these lines in place with a ruler and then sew on top of them if you prefer, if you don't have a quarter of an inch foot. Now keeping the fabric flat on your cutting mat, cut along one of the diagonal lines. Now don't move the fabric, but move your cutting mat. If you've got a rotating cutting mat, this makes it a little bit easier. If not, use a small cutting mat and turn that round, or you'll just have to walk around the other side of your, your table, but don't move the fabric. Once you've cut both lines, turn it around again without moving the fabric. Now cut straight down the center. So where those lines cross, cut straight down the center, Line up your rotary cutting ruler across the top edge to make sure it's nice and straight at the top and the bottom and you're cutting exactly through the centre. Now by cutting these four lines, you've now divided that one big square into eight HSTs, which is so much quicker and more fabric efficient than in doing it in another way. Now open up each of them and press the fabric 
towards the darker fabric. So with this, it's towards the green fabric. So press each of the squares so that you are pressing towards the darker fabric. And it'll look like this. Now you need to trim them. They're a little bit bigger than needed. So they need to be two and a half inches square. So if you place your ruler, make sure the line on your ruler goes through the sewn line and then just trim it. So I've lined up the edge so that it measures, it's halfway between the two and a half inch point. Then turn it around, place your ruler back on and line up that centre line and two and a half inches on the left hand side, two and a half inches down the right hand side and trim it. And this is the easiest way to be have an accurate two and a half inch HST. Repeat that with all of them and then you will have eight HSTs which you use to make one star block. Making the flying geese, you need four of these for each star block and we're going to make these in one go. So take the green star block flying geese body and four background fabric star block flying geese wings and draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of all the wing pieces. Place one of these wing squares in the top left hand corner of the body square. The body square is the green one and will form the body of the flying geese and the wings is the background fabric and will form the wings and then smaller. So place one in the top left and one in the bottom right. You will see that those diagonal lines and the squares overlap in the centre and they're supposed to do this so don't worry you haven't cut them to the right size they need to overlap and I like to put a little pin a small pin just through there and that just holds that in place. Now sew a quarter of an inch either side of this line. Again you can draw that in place and sew on top if you prefer or use a quarter of an inch foot. So this is what it looks like when you've sewn quarter of an inch either side of the line. Now cut along the drawn line and this will separate that square into two triangles. So now place these on your cutting mat and you need to fold over the wings so they face upwards so that the seam allowance is pressed towards the wings. You can press that with your fingers and then use an iron. So just make sure that the seam is laying right on the edge and it's nice and flat and then repeat that with the other one. I find it easier to open it out first with my fingers just to make sure that seam lays right on the edge and you are folding it over towards the wings. And then give it a press to make sure it's nice and flat. Now take one of these place pieces and place it so the corner of the body is at the top and take another wings place and place it on that corner so that the diagonal line runs from top to bottom. The diagonal line will also run through the centre of those two wings that you've already attached. So pin it into place either side and then take the other section, place it with the body at the top like this and then take another wings piece and place that right sides down on top so that the diagonal line is running from the top to the bottom make sure the raw edges of the wings are matching with the raw edges of the body pin it into place now sew quarter of an inch either side of that line and exactly the same with the other piece quarter of an inch either side of the drawn line and then it will look like this now cut along the drawn line And that divides that piece into two flying geese. And if you cut along this drawn line, it will divide the other piece into two flying geese. So now you've made four flying geese from two squares of fabric. So fold the wing piece over so the seam allowance faces towards the wing. And repeat that with all four of them. Now all you need to do now is trim them because they're bigger than needed so we're going to trim them to make them accurate. They need to be two and a half by four and a half inches and the way I do this is I trim the top because it's important that there's a quarter of an inch above that top point. Then I use my ruler, line up the two and a half inch mark and trim the bottom and then to trim the sides if you make sure it's two and a quarter of inches at that top point because that's the halfway and trim the other side and that will trim right up to the corner of the body piece then turn it round 
and you can now match up the four and a half inches. Make sure you're matching up the straight lines on your cutter. And that makes one perfectly cut and pieced flying geese. And now you have four in total, which is what you need to make one star block. Adding the star borders. You need to start by assembling one side border by sewing the blocks together in the following order. Take one of the HSTs, then one of the flying geese, then another HSD and place them in a row like this so that the points match. Sew them together, down one side one, and then the other side, making sure the points match as you sew them together. And then they will look like this and make both side borders in exactly the same way. Now to make the top and the top border, sew the blocks together in the following order. You have a star block border square, then an HST, then a flying geese, then another HST, and then another background fabric star block border square. Make sure the points face inwards and you sew them together in this order. Repeat this to make the bottom border in exactly the same way and do double check against the video or the photos in the instructions that you've got them sewn together in the right way. They'll also lay out diagrams to help you to just double check. So that's the top border and the bottom border finished. Now to complete your star block, you need to just sew it all together. So take your diamond square section and we're going to sew this one side border to one side of the inner borders on the diamond square section and one side border to the other. Now to get a neat finish, it's important that you match up the seams. So if you place the side borders right sides facing onto the diamond square section, match up the point where the HST meets the flying geese and push a pin through that and then into the seam that joins the side borders to the, in, to the top and bottom borders. These are the inner borders we're matching up now. So again, push a pin through that seam and then push a pin through the seam on the inner borders. Then you can be sure they match up exactly. Push a horizontal pin through, then you can remove that vertical placement pin and then pin together at either end. This just makes sure that everything matches up. It will just look a little neater and even if you get those seams to match up and then sew that together and sew the other side border in place on the other side in the same way and then it will look like this and you can see those seams match up nicely then take the top border and sew that to the top again take care to match up those seams there and then take the bottom border and sew that to bottom again match up those seams in the same way as you did with the side borders You've only got those seams to match up. The rest of it is just a plain piece of fabric with no seams, so it will be easier. Now that's the top border and the bottom border. So that's one star block complete. You can see I've pressed all the seams over. Now you need to make 13 star blocks in total. They are all made in exactly the same way. So you could start by making one block to see how it's done. And the others, with the others, you could make them. So you do all the central sections and then all the flying geese. It's up to you whether you do it as a production line or whether you do it one at a time. But make 13 star blocks in total. Assembling the quilt. Now you've finished all the blocks, you can join them all together. Refer to the quilt layout diagram to see what order to put them in. You're alternating the star blocks with the robin blocks, but it's important that you have the right facing robins and the left facing robins in the correct positions to get the finished look of the robins facing inwards. So sew them together once you've laid them all out one row at a time, making sure that you match up the seams where it needs to be by pinning them together and then sewing them together. So you've got five blocks in each row and there are five rows in total. So once you've joined together each row like this, making sure that you've got your robins facing in the right direction, then you can sew the rows together. So there's row one at the top complete and here's row two. So you can see that you sew them right size facing, make sure that you match up the seams and you can see how those corner triangles in the corner of the robin blocks create the star chain effect when it joins up with the star board the star blocks so pin them together and sew all five rows together so that you've now joined all of your blocks together and you can see where the star blocks join up with the robin blocks it creates that chain effect between them so matching up the seams pinning and matching the seams is important 
It doesn't matter if the odd one doesn't match up completely, but try and match them up because then it makes that chain effect work. And I've pressed all of these seams open and flat because there's a lot of bulk in them, but you can press them into one side if you prefer. Now you need to join all the borders on. So for the borders, it says in the instructions how you need to join together two strips of fabric and then trim them to size because the borders are longer than a width of fabric. But all of that information is in the instructions about what size you need to trim them to. Now the side borders are just plain pieces of fabric, but the top and bottom borders have squares in the corners. So take the squares, again all the details for the sizes and what the squares are called in the instructions, and pin and sew one square to either end of the top border. It just ties the quilt together by having the borders, these little square borders in the same colour as this, the triangles that form the chains. So sew those to either end of the top border and press the seam open and flat for this one. And then sew a square to either end of the bottom border. So that's the top and the bottom border completed. You can now sew the side borders to the side of the quilt. I find it easier for positioning if you fold the side of the quilt in half and mark this point with a pin, then take one of the side borders and fold this in half by just matching up the raw long edges. Make sure it's exactly in half and then mark the halfway point with a pin. When you're pinning two pieces together that are quite long like this, it's best to pin them in the centre, which is this halfway mark, then at either end and then between you can also divide them in half again, so you divide them into eight, eight equal sections if you prefer. It just helps it to get more even because obviously the edge of the quilt has got lots of seams in it which pulls the fabric in a little bit, whereas the border has no seams. And to get it to sit evenly, it's best to match it in the centre. Now turn it over so that you sew the side border to the edge of the quilt with the quilt on top. And this is because you've got lots of seams which are pressed either open or to one side. And in order to stop them being twisted, as you stitch over them, you can make sure you stitch over the seams so that they're facing in the same direction that you pressed them originally. So I've pinned it in the centre, I've pinned it either side, and then I'm going to pin between, making sure the raw edges match up, and then pin it at the other end. And again, pin it evenly, making sure the raw edges match up all the way along. Make sure you put plenty of pins in. It's so much easier to sew if everything is matching up before you pop it under the machine. Now sew that side border in place. So you can see here the side border is running down the side. And then sew the other side of the border on the other side. And it picks up the colour that's in the diamond squares if you've chosen to use the same colours. Now you can sew the top and the bottom border in place. Again, fold it in half to match the centres and also make sure you match at the seam that's join, joining the square to the top border with the seam that joins the side border to the quilt and then it will just be even. So do do mark the centres and do that first and then do those the corner seams. Now you can sew the top border to the top of the quilt and again you can see I've pressed the seams open for this one. And the squares sit really neatly in the corners and it just gives it a nice little finish. And then sew the bottom border to the bottom. Again, you can see I've got those seams matching up and it just finishes off and gives a nice look to the edge of a quilt. Now your quilt is finished. You just need to add wadding to it, quilt it. And I've used a double fold binding, which I've top stitched in place. There's a full video tutorial on the Amber Makes website that goes into more in depth about how to add a border.